Hey guys, welcome back to the Dunk, the podcast, the the one and only, the thing that you wake up on Sunday morning for, low budget stuff. How you doing, Dutch? I am doing fantastic. How are you today, Buggle? I'm all right, I guess. <laughs> I no, I had a good day. Um, got got outside a bit. Uh, lots of snow where I'm at, so uh, got to play around, watch some LCS games, all the ones that matter. Yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, now we're getting the podcast going, so only, I'm excited to talk about some... Only two executive. LCS games happened, so you only care about four teams, I can tell, at max. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to... I basically wanted to watch, like, to see if C9 uh, could actually play the game or not, and sure. that's the only one I really cared about today. Gotcha, okay, okay, yeah. And uh, it wasn't... I mean, it was it was all right, you know? It was an okay game to watch, but uh, no... no uh, you know, no harm done there. Uh, it's just, uh, it's fun to watch the LCS going on with the LBLCS and kind of seeing. It's interesting, actually, to watch, like, the meta and the LCS be different than the meta and the LBLCS. And I always, mm-hmm. like, like to see the picks that the pros are pulling out and then see how that overlap goes in, uh, in the LBLCS. So sometimes there's overlap, especially in, like, the bot lane. But things are always different in pro play than uh, competitive fives in, in our, our ELO. Um, yeah, no, it's so. definitely... <clears throat> There's definitely like adaptations that are made because of what you see. Um, sometimes it's because of what you don't see too. Uh, and I think you really either see it in the lot lower leagues or the lot upper leagues, um, because yeah. those CEO players, you know, they're really playing for that meta. They want to win. It's a lot more competitive than it is in the lower leagues. Um, and the teams in the lower leagues see something like, oh, that's interesting and cool. Let me try it. See if I'm any good at it. And then they will either practice it a bunch or, or try it out a couple times. Um, but we're not talking about either the lower leagues or the CEO league. We're talking <laughs> no. about executive. Yeah. So today's all about executive, um, which is going to be great because executive is one of those leagues that has been around for multiple seasons now. A lot of returning players, a lot of new players, um, like with many of the leagues. And it's it's pretty it's a pretty great league to watch because it's kind of in that in between uh, zone. Uh, it's not like as big as commercial too. Uh, so it's like one of the leagues that's more easy to keep track of and kind of understand what's going on um and with that said it's a very like it's looking like a very well put together league um a lot of these teams are coming out pretty even as far as their score lines in these in this uh uh, first couple of weeks so we're now in week three um so we'll see if there comes uh some clear winners but i really like seeing leagues where it looks pretty even it kind of looks like these teams are ramping up figuring out how to play together um, some of some of the teams are returning, um, but maybe with slightly different rosters. And then we have some entirely new teams and all are looking like pretty even. Um, there's no clear winner. Uh, the top, you know, we'll, we'll kind of go team by team in a minute here. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the KFC and BBZ, um, two of the top teams, will have a lot of their victories because of um, uh, some forfeits and yeah. some scheduling issues. So even the top, like, you know, top few teams some of that isn't really because of gameplay necessarily and no hate on um either of those teams but um you know that's just kind of what happens so right you know with that said a lot of these points i mean the points across the chart uh you know top two are like three three points each and then below that it's a bunch of twos ones a couple zeros but everything is still really really close well you also touched upon how like the 
right there's there's six teams that have a win, and two of those teams were basically gifted those wins. Whether or not they would have won the series is regardless, because mm-hmm. overall there's been more draws in the series. There's been six total draws in the series yep. or in the in the league. So there's more draws than there are wins and losses directly, um, which shows that this league is going to be pretty balanced because you're not just playing, you know, you're going to play everybody. So yeah. everybody's going to see, okay, where is this actually fleshing out? And I think we're going to see a lot of the, I think the breakaway teams will break away, right? The teams that are better will, will form themselves. Yeah. They'll push up the, the ladder. I think because there's that wild card in this one, we're going to see a big fight from like 8 to 12. I think those four um, teams, whoever ends up near there, like that's going to be where it gets really tense when you when you get to the end of the, the season. Yeah, so let's uh, let's just quickly before we dive in. Uh, so format basically is top six make it into playoffs, and then there is a, a mini uh, consultation uh, tournament to see who gets those extra two places. I believe. Mm-hmm. Yep. So those, the last four teams, seventh through tenth, um, are gonna are gonna be battling it out. And I I always really like uh, when you kind of have that uh, you know lower part of the uh or the mid i guess part of the league kind of having to battle it out and sometimes yeah. at the end of the season those can get like re- turn into like some extremely exciting games because it's a whether or not you can break into that seven through tenth spot um for these leagues so it's going to be really interesting to watch uh the the, the upper teams break away uh, but also just keeping that middle um pack interesting so if it continues to be a lot of even you know draws and not nobody breaking away too much then we'll probably see some fierce competition yeah it gets um, even more intense in those best of threes because you don't just play the the standard two you have that third game that's the decider so so whose mental is better who's who's adapting better and stuff like that um but do you want to take on the first uh team right here yeah, so AVX, um, which I think is a great place to start. Um, AVX is, has been showcasing themselves really well, and they are, you know, one of those top three teams that have actually won all. Like they didn't win through uh, forfeits, right. um, so they've actually shown that hey, we're a team that can show up to these games. We're a team that can win, um, and they're they've been showing up really well. Um, they have a couple standout players um, in one of their games specifically. Um, we did have, oh, and without further ado, I'll break f- quickly uh, from talking to AVX to uh, to introduce uh, Mobron, who is our guest today, uh, talking to you on the LBLCS podcast. Welcome, Mobron. Hey, how's it going, guys? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt your uh, expert. No, knowledge. no. I'll, I'll let you continue. Yeah, no, for time scheduling things we got going a little earlier than what Mobron signs up, signed up for, so we're glad to have you in here. Pretty much... Uh, here for the start of it um so mobron awesome. i guess i, I have a for my first question for you uh have oh you, okay have you looked at any of the results that you did not play in um in yeah people? i you know i like to keep my notifications on lblcs page that's in check. so i you know i gotta <laughs> i gotta click in and just take a little peek <laughs> yeah take a little Here peek at how the teams are doing well not, so... not seeing as many one ones as yeah, I've seen a few more two O's than we used to. Yeah, well, there's a couple. Um, we did mention that KFC. Um, just to catch you up, KFC and BBZ. Um, ranked two and three team, or I guess they're tied tied for um for three. Um, those teams did get a couple two O's from forfeits. Uh, but we are talking a. Uh, it's A V or A V X. Um, yep. So we're talking A V X right now. Who you actually are a perfect person to kind of jump in and and go off it. I was going to say a couple things, but I'll let you take it away because your team did play against them. They played both yeah. and Prime, and they played Designated Drivers. Yeah. So unfortunately, I I cannot give you as much analysis as if I'd actually yeah. gotten to play. But I did do um, some of the drafting against them. Uh, they seem like a pretty well-rounded team. They seem, you know, like a like mm-hmm. a team fight oriented team. They like to get their top on the engage. Their mid really likes control mages. Um, bots kind of more focused on the utility ads and and kind of similar support to me, where it's like an enchanter player. Um, yeah, they seemed really solid. Like they, I think it was a little unfortunate because we didn't have ninja bears, and he's kind of our. Uh, biggest like carry threat mm-hmm. um so I'd, I'd definitely like to see a re- how a rematch would go with ninja bears but um yeah they seem like a really a really solid team fight oriented team 
I think one of their things is they they flex the Seraphine. They so yeah. like the early fic, like Seraphine Ash or um, um, you know, like one of the blind pickable top laners. I think mm-hmm. I think they've got a pretty um. Yeah, looking at their kinda, comps, they did standard pick. type of definitely, play style. Definitely, definitely very kind of like. Okay, we're gonna play for every objective. I mean, I see that they you know they run a lot of CC in their comps with some pretty clear damage threats that are coming out too. And, you yep. know, they play stuff like the new, new things that have really good solid objective control and good zoning. So I think that this is definitely a team that will threaten, um, every neutral objective that exists. They seem very good, like fundamental team, just mm-hmm. like, like have, have their role players have their, I think they, they have an interesting position where I think their jungler is one of their, like, star players but we would one of our strategies going into it is we wanted to get him off a carry threat and he put up a really good performance on sedjuani in the, the first game we played against him so yeah i mean i think they, they definitely are like flexible yeah flexible players it seems like yeah and there's, it says a lot. a lot of like ego yeah it says a lot for someone like toku finn their their jungler to be able to like perform really well on stuff like nunu but and uh Sijuani, but then still go on to uh, to carries like olaf so i think that's pretty awesome to have a flexible player um yeah, and, and he popped he, and off it, on olaf on that first yeah week. oh yeah and it seems like they're a team that might have like be able to like manage and see who they want to pop off and kind of pour resources in because Mm -hmm. in all of their games they pretty much have someone slightly different that's like really taking most of the gold and like kills in the game like zo Mm -hmm. uh, exo uh wuba um like popped (laughs) off like crazy on uh, (laughs) uh, i don't know if that's how you say his name but um on victor one game and then against against your team and then their uh their uh ad carry like uh popped off on the ash so uh, it seems like they're yeah, 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 had a really good game that that second game. Yeah. So as far as uh like splitting time with um well actually actually we'll we'll keep going and we'll we'll hit more on your team because I do have a couple questions. So KFC and BBZ are next. Um, they did get a couple of their wins uh at the gate um for through forfeits. I mean that's that's an advantage in itself. I mean if you're there if you're always able to make the time schedule and yep. your team is cohesive. So even though those were like f- kind of free wins, I mean shout out to them for for being able to, you know, make the times and and, and follow the rules and also, you know, for uh Hard well done with their opponents for, you know, I mean just saying, "Hey, like we are going to forfeit because we can't make it." And right. that's just how it goes. Just solid so communication just, from mm-hmm. the from the captains there. Yeah. Yeah, so that, well definitely. Done. So have you have you scrimmed or played against um, kind of either of those next two teams we see on the list, um, KFC or uh, BBZ? You know, we haven't. I actually don't know. I remember KFC is the one that has, like, the the diamond player, right? They have the ear yes. cling. I have yep. not seen – no, I haven't seen a lot out of either of those have, teams. Um, have you guys scrimmed against Blub? Scrim. We have not. We've only scrimmed in our league. We've scrimmed the Golden Griefers okay. a few times. And then let me look through. I know. I mean, I know I can talk about Bill Withers. Yeah. I, I was subbing oh, we'll, for them. We'll definitely talk about Bill Withers Don't for worry. sure. <laughs> I, can talk about, I, I feel like I know the first, third fraction army pretty well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the newer teams, except for. I know one player on, on what was it? One of the new teams, Sovereign, who's the mid laner. I used to be on a team way back in the day with him. But other than that, I don't know anything. I think he's on Urgotum. Or... Okay, a lot of question marks other than that? Basically, yeah. Okay, well, uh, KFC. Okay. I think we may take callers later in the in the uh, the podcast. We'll see. We'll see where we're at once we get through some of these teams. But yeah, what do you have to say about KFC? Uh, we s- haven't seen like a ton, but there's a couple things worth noting on their team. Yeah, I was gonna say that they um they tied Blub Executive. Uh, yeah. If you know anything about Blub Executive, um, you know last uh, season in the LBLCS, they kind of dominated a lot of uh, the Executive League. They came in first in the league, ended up getting beaten actually by the team that is now third multiplication double admiral artillery vanguard company whatever <laughs> that super long name. Um, used to be the gold diggers and they were the guys who knocked them out in playoffs. So one thing I do want to touch upon bef- before we skip over down to, to, to the Coog esports homie sensuals is um, whoever's in fourth 
in the executive league almost always overthrows the first place. It's like a weird curse of mm. the LBLCS. Mm. Oh. Somehow you're in the same side of the bracket and, and well, first huh? gets overzealous and somehow gets beaten. It happened uh, in season three. It happened in season four. Uh, so And in season two, the fourth place team won the entire thing. So it's definitely a curse of the executive league. Definitely. The mythical power of the best of two format. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but early King specifically being like the one that was like super noteworthy, um, like popping off on Silas, um, is pretty awesome. And it seems like their team in general, um, KFC can uh can do well. They're playing a lot of pretty standard comps, um, with like a tank and a bruiser, um, in pretty much all of their games, or like possibly two tanks, uh, in some of them. And in general, like pretty low uh, low deaths uh, in most of their games. Um, well, actually, I, I guess I shouldn't say that. But um, in their victories, they look pretty clean um, from mm. what I can see by the by the score lines. Um, obviously, you can't judge uh, everything by the score lines. Right. But all in all, uh, looks pretty good start for them. Um, same with BBZ, uh, starting off strong. Um, but yeah, that fourth place team, CEH. Um, any uh, any thoughts on uh, on them so far from either of you? Because I can surely chime. I've in. oh I've got thoughts. Okay, hit them. I don't hit know him. if I should be the first one to go because then I can make it look like I know more than you guys. If you go first and then I correct you, so maybe you guys go first. Okay. Yeah, so looking <laughs> at the one game they have played in week one, analyzing expertly their draft. Wait, are they? Well, they, they, they went went... right with Gargas, so awesome. French GF, that's them, right? C E H is uh, barrels and cigars, sex seraphine, right? Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. they have, okay, gotcha. So, well, they have a player named Hex Seraphine as their support. So, <laughs> so obviously, pretty. That good. tells me something. They have a seraphine man as a support. Very good. Oh, and they played Senate, too. Interesting. So, those. So. The first game they banned Seraphine away from the support and they picked Senna and then the second game they got their Seraphine. That's very interesting. They're definitely unorthodox picks. They sound familiar. Yeah, um I'll actually say that some of the players on C E H were actually on Blub and they kind of split into two. Mm. So this is kind mm. of a, a reformation of some of the previous Blub players as well as new players. And the new players, I think, are also super, super good. Uh, Grandpa Max definitely is a standout, Has really likes those bruisery picks. Um, and you can even see that he's got more dangerous picks. They, they had to ban things away, um, yeah. like Rengar from him and or the top laner. So there's definitely some type of synergy going on with the ability to be able to play uh, a wide range of champions. Also, we know... People like Ritsu, um, who I think's name is um, L Y L I Y U U now. Um, yeah. Great player. Really phenomenal player. Had a great performance in last season. So they're definitely a threat. They had to FF this week. But yeah. they did win pretty convincingly, it looks like, against Laxatives in week one. Yeah, I mean, based on what we saw from them in, against that team... Uh, they look pretty convincingly strong. I mean, it's unfortunate that we don't get to see what could have been gone down in uh, in this week, but I'm sure we'll ha be able to form like more solid opinions. But just by the fact that a few of the members were previous LBLCS uh, players um, is usually a good sign. Um, like picking up some new people and then being ex blub players, um, I think is a good sign. And based on what we see out of them, they they look pretty convincing. I don't know. I'm I. I really would like to see where this team goes because um, I think that what they've shown so far looks really good. There's just not quite enough um, data to like know exactly where they would stand. And I think that's kind of the case for a lot of these teams. But Yeah, I mean, it's a feeding frenzy right now, right? Because we've got more teams, I think, than executives ever had. So what, like 14 teams? Yeah, yep. 14 most teams. So that's going to it's gonna take a while for... And even the teams that were established have you know a lot of roster changes, so it'll take a while for things to settle down yeah i mean it will um it's it's a tough it's kind of really tough to to say for sure um what will happen but we will see uh so those top spots i think are all pretty much open um but unless you have something to say buggle did you have anything else on ceh 
Um, I think that this team definitely has people not only that can outplay you individually, but I think they have really good team cohesion. I'm um, looking at the just number of assists they have per kills. Usually they have somebody assisting at least. It's like a 1.5 ratio yeah. per game. So, you know, there's multiple people inv involved in a lot of kills, and they also have the ability to kill you individually. Um, so, you know, I think that's a really powerful threat in executive. I think that's when that, that really starts to matter a lot. Um, where mm -hmm. in the lower leagues, I think just having team cohesion can win you the game, even if you're not that good of a yeah. laner. Um, so I think that's yeah. that's a big up for them, and I think that's that's a big takeaway. Oh, you're 100% right. That. I mean, like, in my experience playing the LBLCS, I mean, we, we were a team that had pretty, pretty like, mediocre solo laners in, in all my team um, both multiple seasons but would like win through like team cohesion a lot of times and like protecting carries and stuff like that so it can definitely if you have kind of both those things where you can do well in solo lanes um right and have a team cohesion for later in the game it's kind of the win-win scenario so if we end up seeing that like consistently out of this team I i'd say they're they're probably a top team um but moving on to zenigma uh, and Zenigma played, uh, they did get a 2-0 against uh, Bay Blazers, um, which looked pretty awesome. And I, I will say, the thing that I was most excited, like looking through all of Executive, the thing I was most excited for was this team, simply because I love unorthodox picks. Um, I love it when people bring out really weird stuff and then do well with it. Um, and they kind of pulled that out. It was no like pop off crazy performance, um, but I, I can't really say for sure. A lot of assists coming out of uh, the Ivern pick, uh, and it was an Ivern top uh, running TP and Airy uh, out of uh, what was what's his name Ger Gerardin. Um, Gerardin uh, played yep. the uh, the Ivern top, and that's a that's a pick that got me super excited. So get that champion out of my games. I, like <laughs> I don't care what role it is. I hate. Oh my god! Don't All right, so you yeah. heard it here first. If you want to be designated driver, no <laughs> ground playing. Just, just play Ivern. It's gonna be fine. Actually, we've seen some Ivern coming from a few different teams, yep. and they and they actually he's in a pretty decent spot right now. I think he's actually yeah pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think Ivern's pretty solid. He's like on that like just on the cup cusp. You know, of relative like, to Ivern competitive play and they uh it obviously did something in the game because game two so they played it top game one and then game two bay blazers banned it within the first three bands so even though the scoreline was nothing ridiculous it obviously was an annoyance uh or something that they didn't want to see because it got banned against uh zenigma uh game two so I, I really like to see stuff like that pop out, even if you don't like the pick. I it's, think Ivern's actually a pretty cool champion. Um, and just in general, I, I like strange picks, uh, especially in the top lane. Like, it makes things interesting. Yeah, I think that we also see in this one, like uh, going back to Baby Lizards a little bit too, like how the kind of comps they like to play as well. Um, and it looks like they're all about team cohesion also and, and really protect the carry. It looks like, uh, I mean, you look at game one, in that series, and you see Seraphine in the mid lane, Thresh in the bottom lane, and Shen in the top. That rings true to me that you have a, a good player on your team as Bay Blazers. And you're like, if we keep this guy alive, we could probably win. And that that is yeah. looks, that looks like what they tried to do there. So that's definitely you know something to look at for them. And in game two, they just went full Wombo. Yeah. Yeah, they're also coming out with some, some decently unorthodox picks, like the Udyr in that game two. Um, and yeah. then the... I mean, obviously the Ivor in top. But yeah. also the Braum is just something you don't see very often. Yeah, and I think Braum speaks to like maybe the play style of, hey, let's just keep our, our carries alive. Um and having just a tank that can that can get, kind of go in or get or disengage is, is pretty nice. But it seems like their uh their support Zen um kind of plays multiple styles depending on what they're they're feeling. So it looks like He's kind of flexible because he did play the Braum, but then play stuff like Pantheon as well. Mm -hmm. So I really like to see teams with this uh, this diversity in their pool and kind of playing multiple uh, multiple styles. But yeah, putting faith in carries is, seems like something that's that's been going well for this team. Sovereign is on the next team, by the way. Sovereign is on Degenerate Exiles. The the person that you know, Mobron, the one you played with before. So we're actually oh, Sovereign, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about them yeah. next, actually. Oh, awesome. Yeah, well, I was totally wrong about what what time, what team they were on. Yep, that's why I was telling you. <laughs> yeah, so D D X, uh, degenerates exiled. Um, what uh, what Mobron sounds like you've got uh some opinions, good, bad. I'm not sure, but I'd love to hear them. Oh no, I mean, I just briefly was 
uh, Sovereign was the top laner for Solar Flare. It was a it was a very different roster than you guys know, but it was mm. me and Akon still, and then he was on it, and then two other people that. So no MZ, no Vezu. No, it it wasn't Vezu at the time or okay. MZ. It was um this guy named it was Joseph backwards was his name H Peso J, and then um. <laughs> Another guy, she's probably still around, but his name was Arrow. Sure. So yeah, it was, uh, it was fun times. Was Sovereign always uh, top, or did he, like, because he looks like he's been playing mid. For yeah, it looks team. like he's been swapping in, in this team. It I looks like he did uh, get a top game in, though, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah. Or yeah. Is, so much is he playing mid for this team, or? Looks like both games. Looks like top. both games he was, oh, yeah. I would say both games he was mid. Hard to tell okay. for sure, but he played an yeah, Oriana game and he played a Galio game. So I think, I think he actually played Galio like back when. Yeah, well, Galio but... used to be more so like more so a flex between mid and top. We see it more more mid now, but um, mm -hmm. could still probably stay in the top role. It you know, props to him. He went against Chibi Dragon, who's actually a pretty renowned player in the Executive League. Always pre feared. Yeah. Always ends up. Um, dominating either the CS department or getting the kills for his team. You know, he's a pretty solid carry. Uh, usually draws at least the RE ban or something along those lines. So being able to go tit for tat with him definitely shows how strong Sovereign really is and can be. Um, but I actually want to talk about their their ADC. Yeah. I think Degenerate's Exile ADC is kind of nuts. Yeah. Um, yeah, that Ezreal like pop off looks pretty uh pretty insane, and Kaisa like only only going down two deaths. Uh, and getting to the late game with that pick looks pretty... And, like, the CS numbers on his Kai'Sa game are, like, bonkers good. Yeah. Like, he was up 100 on everyone on his team. And he was up 100, over 100 on almost everyone in the game. Yeah. Like, that's... that's should be, like should be the next closest. And he's still 70 yes. behind. So... Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, this guy's good. But I will say, in the Ezreal game, too, where he has these 15 kills, you've got a Karma, uh, either in the top or the mid lane, and you've got a Yumi down bottom, and you've got a Galio yep. to, to help get that peel. So you have so many resources helping you. I mean, it's such a team comp design around him that, yes, 15 kills is very, very good, and looks like he hard carried his game. Um, but he could only do that because he had the support from his team. So that shows you, too, this team has either practiced together or has really good team cohesion uh, from playing with each other in the past. And I think that's a massive threat in executive. Yeah, I really like their drafts, like, in general. Um, I, I'm pretty pretty into the into yeah. their comps, like going into it as far as like putting resources into the AD carry and then having Peel and uh, just somebody to heal bot you up and then Galio that can play like across map and just push side lands when needed and then you know just drafting like wombo combo like Oriana Malfa is is pretty bonkers with right. Leona to keep you know keep your AD carry alive. I think that drafting just makes a lot of sense. So. Uh, well, well done. If there's a coach there, good job to the coach. And if it's just the players, uh, it seems like you're doing something right. What what an interesting way that draft played out too. Because if you look at these comps, like it's just a comp like they have zero CC on that team except for Sovereign. Like it's just the Galio and then kite back. That's yep. your only game yep. plan. But and oh, you have Yumi. Rumble J four. Victor, Ash, Leona. But Ezreal's so like... slippery. And if yeah. you if you got an early... No, I mean, I, it, like, like, yeah, you you literally have to play that game super disciplined, though, is what I'm saying as the as the team that won, the D-Gen's yeah. team comp, because you can't really like commit to fights against that. You can't fight into them. You really have to yeah. just kite back, siege, be able to disengage, and play completely like map-style PvE. Yeah, I don't think they've been streamed yet but i'd be really curious to watch them play um just based on their, their it's something is definitely going right in in both their their drafts and like how, like you're saying how they're playing the game out so it's going to be a team that will be fun to watch i think in the future uh I, i'm very curious to see how they play the game like uh especially with the with the 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 adc uh sorry stumbling on my words but but yeah uh, and unless we have something else, we can uh, we can kind of move on um, to one of my favorite uh, favorite names in the executive league, which is Ergotum Prime U R G, uh, and we did see their sister team play uh, on the LBLCS uh, pod, er, um, live stream, 
So we I don't think we've seen correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we've seen the uh the prime version of the Steam play yet. Um so, I don't know. I, I don't think we've seen Sorry, Buckle. I just wanted to say really quick, we might as well talk about um if we wanted the Golden Griefers too, because these two teams that are next on the list yeah. actually played each other in the and it's yeah, a solid so let's one. Just kind of up, if you guys wanted to talk about, yeah, the let's matchup. just dive into uh, to the Golden Griefers versus Ergotum Prime. That kind of covers both teams, and uh, the it was a one-one. So there's obviously things to say for both teams that are going well. Uh, so what do you what do you think about these uh, these score lines that you're seeing? These comps coming out. Um, what do you like? What do you not like? Um, for game one, so I'm. It's kind of hard to tell because the bands are cut out, but it looks. Just looking at like the Maokai support, I'm assuming that was like a like an early flex, so maybe yep. like the Maokai Kindred, and then the like getting the bot lane locked in. But but they had the I'm brand. Not... <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting composition <laughs> from. Yeah. I mean, I would, and it worked out for them too. That's a that's a very like balls to the wall comp that is coming a out of. Go in or got them prime. Yeah, I'm gonna put this a... stream. I'm gonna put this uh, game up on the stream right now so people can see yeah. exactly what we're talking about Please as well. Do. Please do. Yeah, yeah, so yeah basically, the... um, basically, they played a uh, as far as Ergotum Prime played like a super aggressive um, a jungler, they played like a crazy, uh, awesome uh, combination between their solo lanes, just two really aggro picks. Um, I'm not sure which. Alt the Silas would have been taking, but um, that has to be a, re a blue cane, right? Like, that they're yeah. going in. Yeah, yeah, that's that's for sure a blue cane. I mean, they're they're all in, and then the vein um, definitely offers ways to deal with their tanks, uh, which is which is always good. Um, and vein, you know, once you get a couple items, you're pretty much uh, ready to rock and roll. And it seems like they were able to execute really well on this team. Um, so good for them. Uh, popping out of the first one. What's interesting too is he played Silas uh, both games. Uh, one game it seemed like it worked out for them, and the other it did not. Um... Yeah. yeah, I think I think this. Oh, go ahead, Buggle. No, I'm just gonna put the other one up on stream right now too, so so everyone can see the t the two teams that we're talking about and, and the comps that they decided to play. Because in in game two, um, you know it's. It's, it's always interesting going into game two because how do you edit draft? How do you fix how you played? What was the real threat? And unfortunately, we can't see the bans from game one. So I don't know how much was edited come game two, but I, that's something I wish I could see. Yeah, I wish I could see the bans. I mean, it looks like they were just able to adapt. Um, or as far as uh, Golden Griefers, um, they were able to adapt for game two and really pop off um, through their AD carry role. I, I'm guessing Digging Graves, their their jungler, was just able to get a lot of assassinations off and just probably played like a beast early game. That would be my my assumption um, based on what we see here, uh, just because their their bot lane just got a little bit uh, decimated, um, and he had just so many kills and like yeah. Kazakh with, with yeah, going there's... ten and two is pretty scary. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's actually a scientific reason for that. It's because their support picked Sona. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is uh one of the lowest HP uh, characters in the I game. I mean, if you look at their team too, like they the draft is a lot different too as far as uh the CC goes, like <laughs> hard CC. I mean, if you just look at that lane like Kaisa, Leona into Caitlyn, Sona. Yeah. I think yeah. we have Fly D in the chat. Did you take E level 1? Well, I wonder if he's gonna. I don't know if we still have him. Hopefully, we have. I want. I do want to know. Uh, maybe we'll get an answer on that. Because sometimes I'll do that in Descendants. It's just like it's free real estate. Or you just <laughs> on him. Why did he win one 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 even. twenty-one? So obviously the the bot lane went pretty well. Uh, Gin and Tonic going fifteen three and eight um, with some pretty solid uh, CS numbers um, in that game. So. Yeah, and he's really unlocked. Like the Leona is really unlocked because there's not really a lot that that so. I mean, the Sona Caitlyn can siege against the Kaisa, but yeah, the rest of their comp isn't set far up enough siege, ahead. You know, yeah. like you don't pick. You don't. Really, I mean, I wouldn't pick Olaf and Zed. In, in a there's comp. there's not a lot not a lot of synergy in this this second comp coming out of Urgotum. 
Yeah, I think um, I think Ergon's probably a, a pretty solid team, but maybe just has to like work on some draft stuff because they obviously know how to play the game that, and go that, super aggro. That draft game one is also pretty interesting, but it's also like they had the winning lanes in it's, the first. It's like a if you win your draft. yeah, if you win that early game, yeah. you win that game. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a sink or swim. Like if you're ahead uh, with with those champions, you're just gonna stay ahead and kill everyone probably. So maybe it's something where you. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of hard to give like a, a team like that advice because it's like, do you either double down and just do you keep drafting like that and just hope you can win the early game every game, or do you actually draft like maybe a little bit more of a cohesive uh, comp with some more CC and kind of something that makes a little bit more sense for your for your carries? Uh, so. Yeah, that makes sense. So Fly D just said that they flex the Morgana on them, so that makes this draft make a lot more sense because Sony has a pretty good pick in the Morgana. But they got bamboozled and just got the Leona gotcha. picked into them. Well, well done. And I mean, I love, I, dude. I I've said on the podcast before, Morgana <laughs> mid, Morgana top, Morgana jungle. <laughs> I love Morgana playing. I think it's such a great champ to throw in the game. Just hard to CC for days. You black shield. It, it's great in all the rules. It is. And I think a lot of props has to be given to Golden Griefers because they do seem to have a flexible draft on that um, support to other roles flexing like being able to blind pick champions and then like flex them to odd rolls yeah because they are they are fairly standard as far as the comps that they end up on so it's kind of cool in that regard because they do play mostly like meta stuff like their supports yeah like it shows a, you that they can, player, they can like switch it and... all up because they, i mean they're mid laner also just looking at logic right there i mean you know, brand to Zed, very different play style entirely and how you're supposed to do it in, in the game. And he looks like he did pretty well in both games. Um, obviously, you're not going to have an amazing scoreline when you lose or, or get beaten. But still, I mean, five kills. We don't know when he got those. I'm assuming he got them earlier with, with some nice roams down in the bot lane. So with three deaths on, on Jin and Tonic, that's why I'm, why I'm thinking that. And there's no kills in the bot lane there. So I think that it's important when you look at this team, how do we put them... Okay, we, we know we're gonna Prime can play different styles. What style do we want them to play so when we face them, mm -hmm. we know what we're going against? What can we put them off of? Yeah, and I think Urga I think Golden Griefers adapted really well. I mean, to be fair, like I actually like both of their drafts a lot. Um, I really don't think they they messed up uh, too too harsh in drafts. Oh, just... Griefers ended up with good. Or are we talking about Urgotum? I think Plus I think the Trump second game ended up a little bit shaky with like not really great engage in the end like they don't really have a way to start fights that game you're talking about ergot and prime in game two yeah yeah the, the you're, re you're relying on the silas and the sona to somehow start the fight yeah yeah mozart well i was more saying really... I, even, I was more saying golden griefers game one even though they lost i actually like their draft a lot oh yeah no they, they, had, they had good comps both games for sure yeah I think it's a super solid draft. Like even, even I, I like that first comp too. Also out of Vergatum, even though it's like kind of unorthodox. Like yeah, it's like a, it's it's, a, got, it's got everything it needs to have. It's a sink or swim though, <laughs> in a lot of ways. Yeah, it is. I mean the the like two v twos top and mid are kind of like sus, but other than that, it's like pretty solid. Like kind of can function. Yes, yeah, so and they just kind of had it looks like and. They kind of could just run around. And yeah, Silas in game one has so many good ults to take. Wanted. You have the Kindred ult, you have the Ash ult, you have the Malphite ult. I mean, massive ults that you can take in, and use in the team fights. Um, yeah, I guess you can kind of have pseudo engage through right. that. Yeah. Maybe I'm not giving them enough credit. No, definitely a, a really solid pick in the Malphite. I'm assuming Silas came after the Malphite in the draft, although I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but Blubbalicious is what comes next on the, um, the sheet right here. And we talked about it a little bit. And I'm actually going to pull up their most recent series uh, yeah, against Wednesday do. right now. Um, and who they just played recently. Um, they had a 1-1 against Wednesday uh, two days ago. So uh, game one, uh, the team that did win was not Blub. It was Wednesday. Uh, and game two is when uh, Blub was able to pull out the victory there. So just looking at the, the games, game one looked not that explosive. 20-7. to seven, isn't that crazy? I mean, we're not LCS, so you don't see like the four to five score lines. Um, yeah. You usually see pretty explosive games, uh, but twenty to seven is actually mm -hmm. pretty relaxed from from what we normally see. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I would. 
but then you look over at the objectives, and they got one dragon the entire game, and no towers. Mm. Yeah, that is true. I think... Let's see, what happened here? I feel like a detective, like, trying to figure out what happened yeah. <laughs> in a game, just looking at the... Oh, I love the Oriana pick. We know... Okay, so, this is actually important. Um, let me try to figure out who is on what side. Is there a way I can do that? Team blue one. side was team uh the it's team one Sorry, both blue. times though wednesdays is... oh that's why i'm i'm lost because normally it says oh, well, team two if you're a red side they would have to post their match history right, we'd have to see the match history to know because i'm interested in oriana is such a safe safe pick i would think that the time um that they they played oriana would be the time where they are blue side because normally mm -hmm. you save that counter pick on red for something like that but I'm not sure how strong Ziggs is into Oriana, and at the same time, Ziggs is the only one who died once, had solid kills, yeah. was involved in so much, had the highest gold on his team. So maybe it was a really great pick into it. Can I, mean, also, I think you also have to look at the 2v2, like mid-jungle as well. Mm -hmm. I think that the, the – like, I'm not totally sure what Lilia does yet. Like, I haven't had a lot of <laughs> – <laughs> like, she hops around, she spins her little thingy. Well, yeah, I mean, really just gets, on you when you're low. Goes in and gets but out. Kind of. I'd assume that they win the two v two with the kindred and, and both of those. Like, like it seems like she would be a stronger early game champ. Yeah. Than Lilia, and I think they actually just like the kindred was probably able to just like roll the Lilia like in her own jungle, yeah. based on like how hard she got abused yeah i mean and then like the as far as bot lane goes i mean kaisa uh, paired with any solid support that can engage is gonna win a lot of lanes um we're mm -hmm. seeing kaisa a lot in the meta and like with something like anything like leona alistar um even set uh are, are pretty bonkers so if yeah, you, you can gonna... stack the kaisa passive really yeah, fast on up. like get... alistar it's just you get two for using the wq combo yeah i mean alistar is obviously doing something really well going to, like with the most by far the most assists on the team like tons of kill participation going 1 1 12 so things went really well for their for their bot lane game one yeah. um, and pulling the kaisa out game two it didn't like they obviously didn't reap the same results um but on the other side echo lord um just seems really really comfortable on that uh that mid lane pick um yeah, into both. What did he play into? Oriana and into the Silas. Yeah, so doing well into the Silas. Okay. Which you don't see. You don't see a lot of zigs in the meta right now. So it's it's something must I want to bring up. Uh, you'll you'll be seeing more of it in CEO with with MZ playing mid full time now. Finally, <laughs> in the first you'll be series, seeing a lot of zigs in the first series that Blood played. Yeah, here's who played. Your boy Larry. Tokyo Love, who's also in this series here. Dopamine in the mid lane. Moochai, who's also uh, in one of the series, one of the games in the series. And then Memer Sticks. So Memer Sticks and Tokyo Love are the only consistent people that have been in every game. Mm. Where you have two different ADCs in this series. You've got two different mid laners yep. in this season, series. You've got one top laner that's consistent, but it's different than the top laner you had in the previous. So this is, a, this is an in-depth squad. Um, and yeah, a lot of rotational players. I love rotating players. If you've ever been on a little Kev or a Frank's Little Beauties or a drinking team, you know this. If you can make the game you play, and I, we try to use that to the greatest advantage we can, I want to see this team. I want to follow up who's playing how much. Why is there clearly somebody that's a, like, is Memer Sticks just a shot caller or is Tokyo Love just a shot caller? And so they're in because they have the voice for the comms. It, are they someone that keeps the team gelled together? So I do want to see. Okay, who's playing when and why? Are they playing against an assassin heavy player so they know, oh, this guy plays Lissandra and Kale, they're going to go in here. I mean, Tokyo Love did play jungle both games, so I could definitely see. Uh, and Mimbrick did play sport, and those are both yeah. roles that shock a lot. So I think you're definitely onto the right thing. And I didn't even know, I'm glad you pointed out that they're swapping roles. I didn't even notice that they played Ziggs both games, but it was different, different people. players. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that means that they just, the team loves the pick. Clearly. Or they've been practicing it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. Definitely, uh, next definitely team. a team to watch. Check it out. Yeah, next team's Wednesday. The team that's still up here. 
Wednesday. Wow, that's convenient. Yeah, huh? Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I already talked a little bit about and and N- N- Blitz um on the Kaisa pick, like in the Yasuo God uh, playing the uh, the Alistar, and they played that bot lane both games, uh, which mm-hmm. I think is good. If you can get the Kaisa Alistar, uh, I, I mean, I think play it. Um, obviously, it didn't work out for them, like. Both it's, it's good into that lane though that they were playing against. I don't know if it was just a counter pick, but yeah, because Alistar, Alistar is usually is very nice into Leona. Yeah, that's like a counter pick for Leona. So I don't know if they must have picked the Alistar now, after they showed Leona. I'm checking these out right, and I see in game one on the left side where Wednesday won, what was banned from uh, Blub was Leona first, um, and then the game that's next they took it. So it makes me think that game one. Uh, that. They probably blinded the Leona game yeah, too. Yeah, they blinded it. They could have blinded it first pick too because they knew it was a takeaway. So mm-hmm. that could have. They could be on blue side game two in terms of blub. True. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm locking it this. in. They're literally, just unlocking the little pieces of information. It's yeah. Like, like, it's like exactly. More archaeologics. <laughs> this, this executive podcast has essentially turned into a detective show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, which is how it goes sometimes, but um, but hey, that's uh, that's what we're in for. So I guess we'll move on from there uh, from Wednesday and talk about well, th- this team we don't have to do as much detective work. We have a <laughs> of this team. I here. got the inside info. Um, well, you've got uh, the captain Bugleberry yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. True. Bugleberry is not playing, but is the uh, is the captain uh, oh, running a bunch of teams. So definitely also has a ton of insight. And I- I've played with some of these players as well, so I'm pretty familiar with designated drivers. Um, so talk about your uh, your team a little bit. Uh, obviously, you didn't play uh, that series, the 2-0, but I think you did play another a di- one of the others the first week. Yeah, I played I played game two last week against. Okay. I'm looking for, so, for John? fraction. Uh, yeah, I think I ended up on Jana. I'm going to pull then, up uh, the week one games because yes. it is against the team that is also below designated drivers, so we can kill two birds oh, with stone go. here. We... Uh, talk about both teams. So convenient. Keep them coming. So convenient. Yeah, so designated drivers, first week. Um, he's pulling it up right now, and they played uh, Bigfoot um, in jungle, or I guess it should t- start top to bottom. So someone you don't know, I believe, played top. Um, yep. Correct me if I'm wrong. And Ninja Bear played mid. Uh, some of you don't know played... Bigfoot played jungle, Droxers in the in the AD carry position, and then plead the fifth in support, uh, with Mobron hopping in uh on support in that uh in that second game. Uh so okay. as yeah, far so... as you yeah, and Plead, I'm curious to know, and this is kind of one of my questions. So you guys obviously share the role. Um you're both uh exceptional players from what I know. What do you guys like to offer? I mean, you don't have to give away all the all the juicy secrets, but you and plead what's the difference there do you guys just both like to play and just split time and it kind of doesn't matter do you like bring in different play styles before you go momron i just want to say the biggest difference is that plead is about eight feet tall and i don't (laughs) think momron's eight feet tall Um, i'm not eight feet tall not quite not quite there (laughs) And that they is let the, the biggest difference get through because yeah. Shaka was one of those things. Like when you guys were an executive team, when I was watching um, last season, the seasons before, I think especially, I think especially the season before, I don't remember, but like Shaka was banned against Plead every single game for good reason. So it's interesting to see it coming out coming out here. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely a beast. I got actually a chance to play bot lane with Plead. I was subbing AD carry when Joxers was out for one of our scrims, so I got to play with his Shaco, and it was Too very fun. OP. Yeah, I mean, I was playing Ash, and it was just pretty anti-fun. Like, I just pressed W on them, and then they just kind of walk into a box and die. Yeah, I mean, pretty, pretty fair. Nice. Yeah, so what else do you have to say about your team as far as, like, your strengths, your weaknesses, how did this team come together? Um, like, different players. Everyone, like, not everyone from this roster was on uh, Frank's Little Beauty squad last season. In fact, most players weren't. So uh, what, what do you have to say about how the squad came together and how are you feeling like the season's been going so far, as, like, scrims and results-wise? Yeah, so, I mean, Buggle just messaged me and he was like, yo, do you want to be on this team? And I was like... As, and I know that Bigfoot was on the team and we were on Rose Bros in the past. So I was like, yeah, I'm definitely done. Like, I wanted to play with Bigfoot again. 
and Ninja Bears I got to play against in CEO a couple seasons ago. I think he's a really, really good player. And Droxer is played against. I don't know, just like, I just know all these guys. Yeah. Chill, chill, chill bunch. And then someone came along yep. and became our starting top laner. And yeah. yeah, I think it just all came together. We're good. We're a good bunch. I think we're definitely like a cohesion based team. Like we don't have like a ton of firepower, but like Ninja Bear is a beast, and then like like Droxer is, is like a really good like DPS slash like really really solid laner. I think we're all just like really good team players. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And even Ninja Bear is like very like team oriented he's not like super resource heavy though we're trying to get like four more resources into him and uh yeah so i think as far as your earlier question what are the differences between me and plead um i think we Hi. bring a lot of different stuff i mean just champ pulls like alone like he plays you know velkaz shaco zyra mm. lux there's like like i play a little lux but it's not something i would like like, to, yeah. like yeah give me lux like you know i play like <laughs> nami Jana, like karma yeah more Sterik, like, more like more you like your pick. casters for sure i like my enchanters and, yeah yeah uh i will protectors. say though you know droxers and plead were on the team uh that won executive league which was frank's little beauties last season but the finals was against the team that you're looking at down at the bottom there uh, that went one and one with designated drivers this season. They're now like third multiplication double. I'm not going to say your whole name. Um, mm -hmm. But they used to be gold diggers. And these are the guys that can pack a punch absolutely no matter what. Um, physical, I will still say to this day, probably is still the best top laner in executive. Uh, one of my favorite mm -hmm. players. He's so scary to play against. I mean, look at the bands that designated drivers throw out. Two in the first yeah. game, three in the second game. The first three bands are at physical. You know, like, we, he's a he's a massive, yeah. massive threat. Not only him, but the polar bear is incredibly good. Um, and everybody else on the team is so solid. And it, I think these teams have a lot of similarities where any 10 of these players, or actually any 11 out of the two games, absolutely can pop off and carry the game. And that's the threat of Executive League 2. Like, these guys are all good. And, and yeah. the scary part is if you mess up, if you let somebody have too much of a winning lane, if you let somebody dominate any amount of play, they will push it until they win. They no, You give them an inch, they're going to take a mile, and both these teams do that so well. Yeah, and I mean, that, that really speaks to uh, to the standings right now. Like, don't take these standings too, <laughs> too much as, like, a solid uh, pick of where these teams are because both of these team teams can show up a lot like like Buggle just said and they just the where who which teams play each other in these first mm -hmm. couple weeks sometimes you have just really tough opponents where you go one and one the first week or first two weeks and then um you know you might be able to come back later but yeah as far as what you're saying for team cohesion um cohesion uh I've played with a lot of these players um on on Disney drivers I haven't played as much with uh the vanguard company's uh roster but i really like to always love to see droxers playing ad carry um phenomenal guy uh, great player um he's a, he actually uh he's a cop um, <laughs> plays caitlin uh too but um but yeah no droxers is, is a really great guy he he played a lot with thc um back when we would do like in-house scrims and like would work on stuff and try to you know kind of coach uh, some of our AD carry and, and support yeah. players through like some laning phase stuff and really like shout out to Droxers for being a, a great member of the LPLCX community and like helping out people. Um, Bigfoot obviously is an admin, really well known player, um, great guy. Uh, some of you don't know, always happy to see that that uh, the clone, uh, as we may call him now, uh, back <laughs> in the LPLCS, and then plead the fifth uh, and uh, Ninja Bear, um, wonderful, wonderful human beings. Um, played played a bit uh, with them as well, and Mobron. Uh, happy to have you as a guest. But yeah, for Vanguard, um, I, I like to see those. Like, it's a really good point you made, Boggle, as far as like the the bands. So designated drivers like throwing two bands out the first game, and then saying, "Hey, that's not enough." He just popped <laughs> off on. Uh, <laughs> he just popped off on on uh, Pantheon. So now we have to throw that in as well. He guy went like ten two and eight uh, with a. Yeah. With one of the our second highest CS number in the game, uh, Ninja Bear uh, actually was was rivaling him on, on CS. 
but uh but yeah like the pantheon is like that's a that's a great pick so someone that's can play aggro champs uh you know can really like put out a lot of damage it makes a so. good laner scarier if they're playing aggro it doesn't matter if you're in fries or in solo queue if the if the good player is a laner who plays aggro it is it sucks because i'm i'm gonna say it sucks because i'm someone who's dog at lane like i'm so bad i'm really good in comms and that's it if i could just sit there and five people played and i got to talk to them i'd be so yeah, much I'm, better i've seen you play yasuo it's you know it's uh, shut up <laughs> uh, <laughs> i always hit my 10 deaths power spike and you know it um <laughs> yeah it's, it's true um, but like i i think the other thing like both these teams have great cohesion both these teams also have really solid mentals and that matters so much come playoffs. Doesn't matter if you lose game one. Doesn't matter if you lose game two. If you're in the finals, you know they'll come back just as hard and they'll fight just as strong as they can in any other series. And that's something we need to see from the, the bottom two teams as well, Laxatives and Bill Withers, who don't have a point yet. Very very early in the season, obviously you play 13 whole series. Um, yeah. Laxatives have lost their first two. Bill Withers did lose their first one, waiting on their second result. Um, hopefully that well, comes in soon. But yeah, Lactive also had to uh, FF. Um, yes, that's true. So it, it doesn't really speak to them as a as a team. I mean, besides the fact that they weren't unfortunately weren't able to figure out scheduling. It um, happens. But like as far as their scoreline, like that stuff happens. So you know, it's, you can't really say much too much yeah. about Lactive right now, just because we haven't been able to see see them get up there. So their standing is kind of like to be determined, as far as my mind says, um, okay. for Lactives. We uh we unfortunately haven't seen and then Bill Withers um I mean there's tons <laughs> to say about this team because I mean I'll let you take it away but like Bill Withers is like sure you're like oh well, let's write off Bill Withers in 14th place don't yeah don't write them off don't because, because they this team is able to improve at a phenomenal speed yeah. and had had put themselves through the ringer multiple times and climbed their way to the top. So, you know, Bill Withers, they may be sitting sitting at the 14th, and you, you think you can uh, count, them, uh, count them gone, but uh, Bill Withers has not shown us uh, what they have to offer yet. In Season 3, Bill Withers was the, mo- the, the worst performing team for, like, the first five weeks, I think. Um, and during those five weeks, you saw them get slowly, incrementally better, and then eventually it came this point where they made this basically miracle run and i'm going to say miracle run because it was the least expected thing um and they took me down and i was the first place team in the league with, with my buddies and uh but they climbed up into like god i want to say it was like sixth uh like all of a sudden they won every single game and then come playoffs they knock us out from first place and they they almost take it i mean they did get beat in the finals but they made it to the finals out of nowhere and if someone asked you halfway through the season who's going to be in the finals their name wouldn't even come up. No. Yeah, Bill Withers has like really showed us that season that they can they can get their act together. They're, it's like they're one of those teams that kind of follows this like maybe maybe they follow this mindset of like you know play casually in the beginning and then ramp up towards finals or mm-hmm. for, towards playoff, which we see sometimes teams do. But they're like the epitome of that mindset possibly um i don't know if they just like get it together and maybe that's not at all what they do they don't ramp up but they were able to ramp up like crazy and like they had this crazy miracle run taking down teams that were like extremely dominant um you know uh, buggleberry uh definitely was one of those teams that uh, yeah well we know, got dumpstered we lost uh, we lost the best of three and two and they were not long games Chippy's a beast. Chippy's uh, a beast. Chung and Aaron, like, roll swapping to AD carry um, when this team got formed because he was a mid laner before. Yeah. So, like, obviously a, a captain that's able to pop into a different role and then still uh, keep his team together. But, yeah, I mean, Chippy was just, like, showed, like, the world what he has to offer that that uh, that season. So, um, I'm excited to see this team play. Even, even though they're sit- sitting low in the standings right now, I think it means absolutely nothing. Yeah. I also think the the team they're playing against week one is I think one of the higher like elo average teams in the league, so I definitely wouldn't write it off off one week. I think um, I think both their carries are. I mean I don't know much about their new players, the top or jungle, but or the support for that matter. But Chungus has like actually a really strong laning phase. Um, like his his mechanics and lane are really good. Yeah, and I think Chibi as well. They both are like pretty good at finding leads in lane, and then I think that is where what you're saying comes into play. Where after that, I think, um, they're like at least from the 
the time that I spent like playing with them. Like sometimes the the way that the players on the team want to win the game is a little different. Yeah. So I think if they get like a, you know, well, one mind in their team and like have a like defined play style, they'll be, you know, a really solid. Going contender. off of what you said, too, Mobron. I mean, three new players to a team. That takes time to figure out. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. how do you be? How do you get that calm sounding good? How do you, you know, get that synergy with your other players? Obviously, you've never played together. Only Chungus and Chibi uh, have played together, and we've seen them play together for a while. But they're the they're the two carry spots. They're the ones who need mm-hmm. protection, need setup, uh, need help to help carry the game. So, how do you then transform that into a conversation that you have in comms? How to get used to how your players play? Do you have a top laner that can pop off that you can play around or a jungler? So, I think. Again, like Dutch said as well, this is a team that you're going to see change and develop as the season goes on. Yeah, I have a ton of faith. And uh, Zeb, I do see you in the chat. Uh, we do notice you. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> but with that said, yeah, I, I really do have a lot of faith in this team. Like they've they've proved it before. Yeah. Uh, Bill Weathers definitely knows how to fix mistakes, and that's like such an important thing in in the LBLCS in general. Um, in any league, it's like your ability to analyze games, fix mistakes, fix champion pools, and work together over the course of the entire season. Like these early weeks often don't matter come the end of the season. Teams can ramp, can ramp up. Some of these teams will all obviously stay in their like high ranking spots um, depending on the league. Like we yeah. kind of already know where people might land up. But, uh, but Bill Withers is a team that I think knows they've proven to us that they know how to fix mistakes and how to find cohesion and I don't see any reason why they can't do it again with new players. Um, maybe make some adjustments in draft, maybe make some adjustments in the way you play the game. Um, obviously, unfortunately, we weren't able to get their game streamed um, uh, last Sunday. Um, but uh, if we could have, we would have been able to see it and maybe we'll get them to, uh, on soon. But I think it's one of those teams, like just to summarize, they're, they're just going to ramp up um, and probably show us uh, what they have. But it might take them a couple weeks to, so... to get the kinks worked out so i'm over on dutch i think that you know talk about every team you talk about the league how it's going how it seems decently even for a lot of it i want to go ahead and this is we're, you know, we're on stream it'll be put on youtube if you don't know we have a youtube channel just scroll on down follow our youtube join our discord play with us Woo-hoo. have some fun um but the last thing we should do so it's on record is mm-hmm. say a team you think will be in the top six that you're not on mobron you cannot say your own team cheating uh <laughs> pick a team right now that you think is gonna make it there dutch first uh, no dutch first okay. no no no. We gotta oh, okay, okay, okay. six let me okay so i actually think that i kind of have two but i'll just give one just yeah. to, to give so top six i think who is this um let me make sure i don't say the wrong team um is it the, you guys going off a player right now? You're making sure you're not saying. I'm. I'm I don't want to make sure. It's the. It's the fer team. Um, either Golden Reavers or Garden Prime. Which one was this? Um, I'm. I apologize for this. Uh, Fly, so it was yeah, Golden go Griefers. So it's Golden Griefers. Okay. No, no, no. Sorry, or Garden Prime. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, 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 bro. Forgotten Prime. So the team that played like the super dive crazy comp with like the brand mid, the um, the vein sure. bottom, uh, that team. I think that that team will probably make top six, um, because of how well they were. Like, I think a team that's able to commit that hard and like pop off early is gonna find ways to get through. Like, have insurance policies for late game. So. Uh, like is, if they can fix some of their drafting mistakes, like that's really the only th- criticism like I can see with that team. I think that they sh- has shown cohesion and like ability to pop off early. And in a meta where you can snowball like your primary Another carries frag. into into getting dragons and getting objectives, yeah. I think that matters a ton. So I think like if they just fix some drafting mistakes and like kind of figure out. They they seem to already based on the score lines and like the what they're picking like they kind of seem like they know how they want to play the game already. Uh, I don't think they have to figure that out. I think they just have to make some adjustments in draft and possibly do some some difference in scouting. Um, sure. But that's like a very easy uh, way. It's a very easy mistake to fix. You know that doesn't take a ton of time to kind of find some cohesion in draft. 
It's Nico so think, on oh me. It's Nico no me. It's Nico no me. Um, thanks for the follow. Dutch, thank you for that. Molbron, hit it with me. Not that team, but a different team that you think will be top six. Okay, just a team. That's Can't be yours. Be top six. No cheating. Okay. I mean... I mean, I think KFC will probably make top six. I think Golden Griefers... Oh, you're gonna give us, you're gonna real, give us all six? Or gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna give you, I was gonna give you, yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you the top six. Alright, go ahead. Okay. And then, let's see. This is so rare. I'm literally just picking two. We'll throw Blubblicious up there. Go Blubblicious. Mm -hmm. Who else we got? Bay Blazers. They seem like they're pretty good. Arcanus Vortex. And then number one's gonna be Designated Drivers! <laughs> Ninja Bear's gonna poop on all of your faces. <laughs> <laughs> I think... And then, of course, Bill Weathers is going to pop in at, uh, uh, you know, 7 through 10th and then climb their way and win the... Yeah, somehow make it to finals. Somehow be <laughs> um, I will say fun. I've got a couple of teams definitely on my radar. Yes, Arcanus. Yes, the Generates Exile. I think the way they played, and I'm really excited to see what their second result is, but the way they played in Week 1 against Bill Weathers, with a comp that only had such little CC that Mobron talked about with just that Galio... Um, like, that's impressive to pull off a comp where you're just kiting back. Uh, so there's mm -hmm. obviously great comms in there, and I think comms really is, like, 50% of the game, if not more. Um, you know, talking with your team, figuring out what you're going to do next. So I think that team is going to be top six for sure. I think Arcanist um, playing both of their games and being at the top of the standings is really important to look at, too. I think that these guys clearly have um, the ability to, to hold out and be there. And... Um, yeah, I think I think third multiplication is going to make it up there too. I think that these guys have shown how good they are time and time again. Uh, every single season they've been around. I mean, they, these guys started out. Some of them back with the Quas. I know the Dummy played in season one on Iron Miners. If you guys have been around long enough watching this podcast right now, um, you know these guys are OGs. And I think that one thing that comes with playing in a, in a community like this and in a, in, a, in a league like this is. You know, how comfortable are you going into games? I think they have a lot of comfort. Well said. And we are, there are a lot of interesting uh, egg comments in the chat. Um, and I think we did have one last question um, regarding uh, regarding Mr. Mr. Eggs in the chat. Um, and, and Buggle, you, you, I believe you had a, uh, a an image to, to bring up regarding this this question. And yeah. something that, that has nothing to do with executive. Absolutely nothing to do with executive. But I, I would like to know if anyone in chat could comment on mm -hmm. this. Does F Dingus F Dingus does he actually consume ketchup? Right. And because that's the big question. He, he says in community, he he said I he did say he eats he has eaten ketchup, That's because, the big but I'm beginning to think it might be a bluff. I think wow. it's a bluff. Yeah, let sink, yeah. let that one sink in. So, I think think about that. Comment if you like, or don't. Yeah, doesn't matter because we know you don't eat it, so. Uh, he yeah, that's assumes what he thinks is ketchup. Yeah. Okay, that's just, that is just... an interesting take, and I think I could I think I could buy that. Uh, and with that Catch said, a lot of things. <laughs> with that said, um, any other uh, any other comments about executive or uh, or the podcast in general or the LBLCS season, uh, Mo Brown? Since you're uh, you're coming on here as our our guest this week, it's gonna be a fun time. It's gonna be yeah. a blast. All right. So Mo Brown just said, uh, no, not a single loss rest of the season. Uh, he's go, <laughs> I didn't say uh, that. Ten yeah, more words. words. All right. Let me. You know what? You want an ending <laughs> statement? Know, <laughs> you always going to be an aggressive one. Yeah, we do. <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> Regular season is an illusion. Mm. It does not matter. One best of two format. As long as you make the playoffs, it's, might as well not be seats. All right. That's. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Ted talk and Buggleberry. Uh, anything else to say before you sign us off? Uh, guys that are sitting at home thinking, hey, it's a Sunday night. It is Martin Luther King Day tomorrow. A lot of us don't have work. So you might as well dive in with the thought that Ev Dingus doesn't eat ketchup and that it takes two to tango. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>